Here's what's happening now. Picture perfect outside, but we got to work on those temperatures as we get closer to Thanksgiving Day. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Also, first at four, a bullet shatters a window at a local school. The campus on lockdown. We're tracking the investigation. And many of you are talking about the Pope's big announcement on how the Catholic Church will deal with abortion. And here's Paula. Hey, Karen, inside this oven, we're told a masterpiece, a turkey roasted in a fraction of the time, supposedly very moist, and you can do it yourself. We'll see live coming up these stories and much more on Local 4, First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News, First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, there is a disturbing mystery today at a school over in Ypsilanti where a bullet shattered a window. It happened this morning at Forest School on Ecourse Road. Officials at the school, which serves special needs students, discovered the shattered window and a bullet nearby. The school was put under a soft lockdown, which means school operations were normal, but no one was allowed to enter the building. Police continue to investigate. Local 4 has confirmed the Detroit Pistons will be moving back downtown. That announcement will come tomorrow. A news conference has just been announced and will be held tomorrow at 3 p.m. The Pistons will share the new Little Caesars Arena with the Red Wings in downtown Detroit. Our Bernie Smilovitz is gathering some more information on this story and we'll have a live update on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Meantime, we are awaiting a word on when the eastbound lanes of M59 east of Harvey Lake Road in Highland Township will be reopened following a crash there this morning. There's no word on the condition of the driver whose vehicle veered off the road and hit a pole supporting power lines. No other vehicles were reported involved. The reopening of the roadway has been delayed to allow for work on the pole and power lines. 1,000 Detroit families will have a happier Thanksgiving because of the generosity of two Detroit businesses. The Adamo Group and IPR Great Lakes gave away turkeys this morning at the IPR offices over on Michigan Avenue near Clark Street in Detroit. This is the third year for the program, which provides a way for businesses to give back to the communities they serve. Time now for our first look at the forecast. You know, it's cold out there, Ben, and that wind just makes it even worse. But the sunshine, Karen. That's the true. Sunshine. I love your optimism there. It looks so nice out there, but yeah, uh, it doesn't feel as good as it did last week. I mean, we were setting records, staying on the other side of normal. In fact, most of November we've been above average, but now uh, we're on the other side of that number. 37 in Ann Arbor. Metro's at 38. That wind is noticeable, so you take that 10 to 15 mile an hour wind with temperatures in the upper 30s, and it's feeling like it's below freezing in a lot of spots this afternoon. Here's how tonight looks. We'll keep the skies clear and that's going to allow these temperatures to drop pretty quickly. Question is, will we see some teens by sunrise tomorrow? We'll look at that and your forecast for Thanksgiving all coming up in a few minutes. Karen. Thank you, Ben. Federal agents have joined the search for a cop killer in San Antonio, Texas. The officer was shot just outside of police headquarters on Sunday. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom right now with the latest on the case, including new video of the man that police are looking for. Devin. Exactly right, Karen. Police in San Antonio are not required to patrol in pairs, but today they are being encouraged to do that after a 50 year old detective was shot and killed while on duty just before noon yesterday. Four hours before that shooting, a man walked into the nearby San Antonio Police Headquarters, told a clerk he had a question, but left before getting an answer. Investigators believe that man returned and killed the officer, firing twice through the passenger side window. Investigators uh, say the man was a sex, or, or the man who was killed was a sex crimes detective, uh, but the, they did not believe that that's the reason why he was shot and killed. I think the, the uniform was the target, and anyone who happened, the first person who happened along, was the, was the person that he targeted. Now, there were three other shootings of police officers this past weekend. An officer in suburban Kansas City, critically wounded by a man who pulled alongside his car and opened fire. The suspect, uh, suspect in that later died in a shootout with police officers. Police in St. Louis also killed a man suspected of wounding an officer in a drive-by shooting. And in Sanibel, Florida, an officer there was wounded by a man who shot, uh, shot at him during a traffic stop. That officer is going to survive, and that suspect, we're told, is now in custody. In the back to the San Antonio shooting for a moment, police have dashboard camera video from the time of the shooting, but they are not yet saying what that video reveals. More to come, obviously. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Devin. 
But we are following other news making headlines all around the world on your Monday afternoon. We begin in Afghanistan, where at least 30 people were killed in a suicide bombing. The bombing took place inside a mosque in Afghanistan's capital city, along with the 30 deaths. At least 35 people were injured in that attack. ISIS has claimed responsibility. Pope Francis will allow all Catholic priests to forgive abortion. Now, in the past, it was up to a bishop to hear that confession or someone designated as an expert. The change in policy revealed today in a letter to clergy. In that letter, the Pope says abortion is considered a grave sin, but the move is seen as part of his effort to create a more merciful church. Thousands of travelers breathing a sigh of relief today. A possible strike over at Chicago's O'Hare Airport has been postponed. Hundreds of baggage handlers, janitors, and cabin cleaners threatened to strike during the busy holiday weekend. Well, today, they announced they would postpone any strike until after the holiday. They say they didn't want to ruin the holiday for families traveling to be together. The strike is now set for November 29th. That is the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So definitely be prepared. Well, since we're talking holiday talk, when you sit down to Thanksgiving dinner, you're hoping for a turkey that's moist and delicious. And that puts a lot of pressure on everyone who is in the kitchen. So we sent Paula Tutman to find some turkey prep secrets. And Paula, I understand you found something new and you're going to show us the finished product. Oh. I'm excited. Well, you know what? I'm a little nervous excited because we have not seen this thing since it went into the oven about two hours ago. It's called a salt encrusted turkey, okay? This turkey should have taken three hours to roast. It only took two. Once we gathered up all of our materials, then it really only took about 15 or 20 minutes to prep. Oven set at 400 degrees. We have not seen it. You will see it first. It's go time at Vincent Joe's Gourmet Market in Shelby Township. Vincenzo Vitale and his wife love, respect, and honor food and the traditions surrounding it. All these franchise, they got to step aside. Vincent Joe's executive chef, Chef Angelo, says preparing a turkey doesn't have to be hard, it doesn't have to be stressful, and the final product doesn't have to be dry. A work of art to both the eye and the taste buds is as simple as learning to prepare a salt encrusted casing. First, the shopping. So of course there's grocery shopping and then there's the experience of acquiring food. And at Vincent Joe's, what we're doing is we are acquiring our ingredients. 32 eggs for egg whites, pure butter, herbs, and kosher salt. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the guest of honor, the turkey. So right here are our wonderful turkeys. First we prepare the salt casing. If you go to someone's house and when they open up their heart and their home and their yeah. kitchen to you, you can't beat it. Oh. And once they turn, uh, bright white we're going to add our uh, salt to it we're looking for the texture of wet sand then we prepare the turkey with herbs thyme rosemary and sage beneath the skin the difference between brining a turkey in which a turkey sits in a salt solution for several days and encrusting a turkey is salt content brining infuses salt into the meat encrusting simply creates an artificial heat sealing oven to lock moisture in with very little salt actually getting into the meat it's important that no part of the turkey is exposed or moisture can sneak out and the turkey can burn. So if you're going to use your thermometer, this is the time to put it in so you don't break that seal. The whole idea, right, is, to, the, is to hold that seal. Taste. Yep. Got it. Temperature is uh, 165 to make sure that it's uh, fully cooked. She goes and we'll see her in a couple hours. Okay, so you guys are going to see it. We're going to open up the oven. Like I said, this size turkey usually takes three hours to cook. Uh, Chef Angelo says this only took two hours to cook. Okay, so this is the salt. Okay, slice it up. Let's see what happens. So he breaks the crust. So that's the salt encrusting. Is that hot? Can I, can I help you with that now? If, oh, ooh, 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 that's hot. So you can put it back in if you want it to brown. Uh, oh, that's hot. Ah, 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 if you want it to brown a little bit more. But he's already put a thermometer in and it's already gotten to be about 165. Uh, 60 All right, slice it up. Let's see how it looks, guys. Does that look moist? How does that look? It feels pretty good. It wow. Pretty good. And that's actually cooked. It's actually cooked. Okay, can you say, okay, here, I'll just eat this like this. Don't cut off my finger because I need my fingers for my job. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take that. Ooh, 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 hot, hot, hot. Hot, Paula, hot, 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 hot. I, Paula, I have to tell you, I give you mm. so much credit. I'd be nervous to cook in my mm. own kitchen. And you're doing it on air and you're doing a good job. <laughs> Looks I good. I was afraid. Do you know what? I was afraid I because understand. we have not seen this thing. <laughs> that's really good. Wow. 
Oh, I can taste those herbs. And it's, you know what? It's got a light saltiness, but it's not ridiculously salty. Listen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the recipe on our website, click on Detroit.com, and of course, where? My Facebook page, oh. Local 4, Paula Topman. This is really good, guys, and you can do it yourselves. Really, really easy and a really good turkey. How's that? Very nice and good, moist. as my little girls would say. Compliments to mm -hmm. the chef. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate it. Our compliments. Ahead, first at four, more controversy for Kanye West and more canceled concerts. What it means for fans here in Metro Detroit. Good afternoon, Dr. McGeorge. Hey, Karen, you know, in good health, I'll have new information on medication mistakes in nursing homes. And if you're not having fish for dinner, you could be making the same mistake as many Americans. What you need to know about seafood and the healthy benefits that you are missing. All right, Doc, but up first, two grandparents say a hot holiday toy caused a fire that burned their pickup truck. The recall and the response from Toys R Us. Next. You may turn. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Dancing takes a lot of courage. Wait till you see a student-run program giving kids with disabilities a chance to experience the joy of dancing. All right, thank you, Priya. In this Help Me Hank recall alert on our Monday, a hot holiday toy is being recalled as a truck fire is under investigation. Take a look at the damage over in Washington State. Some grandparents say they bought the Tonka 12V ride on dump truck at a Toys R Us on Friday. They say the toy caught fire in the bed of their pickup truck on the way home. Toys R Us says this appears to be an isolated incident, but the truck is being pulled from store shelves and ToysRUs.com during this investigation. It's also working with the manufacturer to determine the cause. In good health, just about every person in a nursing home is on multiple medications. It really depends on giving that medicine correctly on the right time, but a new study shows errors are common. So we brought in Dr. Yeah. McGeorge to talk a little bit more about this because we as families depend on these agencies to take care of our loved ones. That's exactly it. And in fact, the researchers combined data from 11 different studies and they found medication errors affected anywhere between 16 and 27 percent of nursing home residents at some point. Now, fortunately, when the errors did occur, they usually did not cause serious problems. In fact, less than 1% of these mistakes caused a medical emergency and deaths were fortunately extremely rare. Thing no is the most common time for errors to occur was during transfers. Oh, good advice. And yeah. also, if you're going to be a family member, keep track of it yourself, too. Very help, important. Help the doctors exactly. out. Another story, even though everyone's talking turkey this week, you might want to remind people to eat fish. That's right. You know, the average amount of fish that Americans eat has steadily been increasing over the last few years, but it so happens the average person is still only eating about half of the amount of fish that the mm. recommended uh, allowance is. The American Heart Association actually recommends people eat at least two fish meals a week and dietary guidelines suggest eight ounces a week. Now, most people, they associate fish with the heart and brain beneficial omega-3 fatty acids, but other important nutrients really include protein, selenium, vitamin D, and B12. Fish are a great source of a lot of things that you can't normally get in your diet. True, one of my favorites. All right, thank you, Doc. Mm -hmm. Well, the winter storm that brushed past Metro Detroit this weekend is now parked over the East Coast. High winds and cold air blowing over Lake Ontario, creating a heavy lake effect snow. Now they're expecting one to three feet of snow to fall through tomorrow. So I guess we are lucky to, to see perhaps a few flurries this weekend. You're smiling big here, Ben. Oh, Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they get they, they rough, know man. They goes on up there, and they still live they there. They still so. stay there, but... Anyway, we're not going to have major issues. No, no, that's good. There's going to be some travel tr uh, trouble spots that we'll mm -hmm. get to in just a second, but uh, most of those should be outside of Metro Detroit, and we'll discuss that here shortly. 38 is where we sit. Sunshine is out. Yeah, the temperature is really not working in our favor, but I guess uh, paybacks are something uh, compared to where we've been for most of the month. 38 here, not much different really across lower Michigan, upper 20s here in the UP and on the other side of the lake, very similar conditions too. We're sandwiched between two systems, all of that lake effect snow there in upstate New York, and you can see this system starting to get its act together here in the Central Plains. That's what's going to cause some problems, mainly for places like Minneapolis and Chicago when we get into our big travel day on Wednesday. In fact, Tuesday nights going into Wednesday morning, they're going to see snow 
snow in the Twin Cities. That's going to be generally rain across the Chicago land area on Wednesday, and that's about when the precipitation is going to start getting to us. It looks like a little finger moisture is going to kind of work its way in on Wednesday. That's going to start out as a mix in the afternoon, but as that low gets closer to us, even though this is overnight going into midnight uh, on early Thursday on Thanksgiving Day, temperatures actually getting warmer, so we expect that to become all rain as we get through the overnight hours. Right now, it looks like that moisture will be out of here by the time we wake up on Thanksgiving morning, so green light for the parade should be dry. Uh, probably not going to get a whole lot in the way of sunshine in here, but hey, uh, at least we won't be dodging snowflakes or raindrops out on Woodward on Thursday. 25 tonight for the low temperature in Detroit, even chillier down in Romulus at the airport where we'll drop down to 22. In fact, most locations are going to be in the low 20s for lows tonight. Adrian at 21, Blissfield, you're going to be at 22, and it's pretty much 21-22 across the west zone. Wouldn't be surprised a couple of these spots, especially out in Ann Arbor, you may drop uh, down into the 19, 18 de degree range by tomorrow morning and our north zone. It's low 20s by the time we wake up tomorrow as well. Now our forecast going into tomorrow shows that we will have sunshine during the day, pretty much similar to what we had today with those highs stopping short of 40 degrees. See if we can get any warmer temperatures in that seven day forecast. Well, at least we will hit 46 there on Thanksgiving Day and temperatures will warm up slightly going into the weekend. Uh, but uh, could be seeing some rain and some snowflakes for Black Friday as everybody heads out to go shopping. Weekend proper looking dry, but just not a huge warm up anywhere in those next seven days. Karen. All right, thank you very much, Ben. We've got some breaking news emerging out of Lansing. Ex-Michigan State University doctor Larry Nasser has been arrested. Nasser spent decades working with local gymnasts and members of the U.S. Women's National Team. He has been under investigation after accusations of sexual assault. Attorney General Bill Schutte and Michigan State University Police Chief James Dunlap will update the investigation into those sexual assault allegations tomorrow at 1 p.m. Of course, we will cover that and let you know what is said. Coming up, it's one of the biggest stories on ClickOnDetroit.com. Kanye West leaving thousands of fans in the lurch. We've got that story and more coming up next. Breaking news from Japan. That is where a tsunami warning has been issued after a magnitude 7.3 earthquake. Residents have been urged to flee the Fukushima coast. We are now monitoring the situation and, of course, we'll keep you posted. Also, check out this dramatic video from Los Angeles. Four people being rescued from a raging river. They were stranded on an island when heavy rains caused a nearby river to flood. More than 100 firefighters responded as they used ropes and a lifeboat to bring them to safety. The four people were taken to the hospital for minor injuries. They are expected to be okay. Well, now to the top trending story of the day, and we're talking about Kanye West. He's causing more controversy and canceling concerts. The rapper has now scrubbed the rest of his St. Pablo tour, including his date at the Palace on December 22nd. West has spent the past week ranting about politics, the media, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Then he abruptly canceled a show in L.A. last night and now the rest of the tour. So if you do have tickets, don't worry, you will be receiving a refund over from the palace. Well, still ahead, we are talking about best dressed dolls in Metro Detroit. That's next. They're the most popular toys this holiday season. Now help me hang, putting them to the ultimate toy test. <laughs> Before you hit the mall or shop online for your little ones, see what the real experts have to say about this year's hottest toys. When they start seeing that it's interesting, um, they start finding that they like, they, they get a wider variety. Students at our adopted school, Thurgood Marshall, giving you the inside scoop. Did you hear that? It burnt. It burnt. <laughs> Help me hang the results of the ultimate toy test tonight at 11. Well, finally, first of four, every year volunteers from all over Metro Detroit dress thousands of dolls for the old Newsboys Goodfellow Fund. Yep, and today those dolls were judged to decide which is the best in show. The top ten list included dolls dressed as Simone Biles and Princess Leia from Star Wars. But at the end of the day, both of those fell second place to this cowgirl doll, which was named Best in Show. She's cute. I love the clothes. Yeehaw. Giddy up. The dolls will now be put on display in the lobby of Comerica's market headquarters on West Lafayette until November 30th, and that's when they'll be shipped out 
to young girls across mm -hmm. Metro Detroit okay. as Christmas presents. Such a creative program, making lots of girls happy. That's really cool. They, it is. They went, uh, went all out for them. They know how to do it. Well, thank you so much for spending part of your afternoon with us for First at Four. We will be back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is next.